Lifting Up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. William Branham was a spiritually deranged figure who gained prominence with certain extreme Pentecostals at the early part of the 20th century. We actually have a recording of William Branham giving a so-called prophecy, prophesying, quote unquote, the Trinity is of the devil, thus saith the Lord. Hence he's a false prophet and a false teacher. Branham claimed to be the angel or the messenger to the church of Laodicea from the book of Revelation chapter three. He also adhered to a version of the serpent seed, false teaching, um, of Eve having sexual relations with the serpent and unsaved people or being the descendants of, of the serpent. Uh, again, not in the, any kind of allegorical sense, but in a literal biological sense, apparently. The man was a mystic. The man was a false teacher and a false prophet. He is the forerunner of much of the insanity that came into the church at the close of the 20th century, including things like the Toronto Deception, the counterfeit revivals from Pensacola, etc. The Kansas City false prophets, particularly the alcoholic homosexual Paul Cain, was an ardent or is an ardent devotee of of William Branham. I would point out that early Pentecostalism was not a monolith. They were not all crazy by any means. Mainstream Pentecostal movements and denominations rejected Branham. In parallel with Branham was another deceiver called E.W. Kenyon. But again, mainstream Pentecostal movements rejected both Branham and Kenyon as heretical. Unfortunately, what the earlier generation of Pentecostal leaders rejected, correctly rejected, rightly identifying as being heretical, later generations of Pentecostals tended to accept, particularly in the Western world. This was William Branham. He's the forerunner of hyper-Pentecostal lunacy. Having said that, he was not the initiator. At a very early point, even from Azusa Street, although Azusa Street may have begun as a move of God's spirit, it very quickly went off the rails into mysticism, emotionalism, and experiential theology. Later on, and not too much later, more biblically grounded Pentecostals came and, as it were, threw grain into the toxic stew and you had a scripturally based Pentecostalism from which came such movements as the Assemblies of God. They're not very good anymore. In fact, they're quite bad um, now, more or less since the time of Pensacola, they've become quite bad. But at one time, they were actually quite good. These were the same Pentecostals. Another was the Elam movement in England. Of all of the Pentecostal movements, the Elam movement was by far the most doctrinally solid and biblically grounded of all of the Pentecostal movements. The Elam movement of, of Great Britain and New Zealand was the best. But of course, under the late Wynne Lewis and Colin Dye and such people, uh, it went off the rails and it went into virtual apostasy at the time of the Toronto and Pensacola and earlier. They began jumping on board with money preachers like Morris Cirillo, et cetera, and became completely crazy. Early Pentecostals, divided between the lunatic fringe and between the solid and sane ones. Now, most of Western Pentecostal has lost, Pentecostalism has lost its way. But the incipient influence in misleading it were certain key figures, the chief one being William Branham 
and E.W. Kenyon. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Thank you.